Parotitis. Definition. Parotitis is an inflammation of one or both parotid glands, the major salivary glands located on either side of the face, in humans. Causes. Dehydration. This is a common, non-infectious cause of parotitis. It may occur in elderly or after surgery. Infectious parotitis. Acute bacterial parotitis. Bacterial parotitis presents as a unilateral swelling, where the gland is swollen and tender and usually produces pus at the Stenson's duct. Common causative bacteria are Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pugens and E. coli. Parotitis as extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Parotid swelling can be an uncommon symptom of extrapulmonary tuberculosis, TB outside of the lungs. Acute viral parotitis. Mumps The most common viral cause of parotitis is mumps. A viral infection caused by paramyxovirus, a single-stranded RNA virus. Common symptoms include fever, headache and bilateral or unilateral parotitis, swelling of the parotid gland on one or both sides of the face. HIV parotitis, HIV-associated salivary gland disease can involve many diseases but often presents as enlargement of the parotid gland and a dry mouth. Autoimmune causes. Sjogren's syndrome. Chronic inflammation of the salivary glands may also be an autoimmune disease known as Sjogren's syndrome. The syndrome is often characterized by excessive dryness in the eyes, mouth, nose, vagina, and skin. Lymphopithelial lesion of Godwin, most frequently associated with a circumscribed tumor with the histologic features of Sjogren's syndrome. Blockage. The blockage may be from a salivary stone, a mucus plug, or, more rarely, by a tumor, usually benign. Other causes can be duct stricture, narrowing of the duct, infection or injury. Ductal obstruction may cause less saliva flow, which can result in recurrent gland infections. Diseases of uncertain cause. Chronic nonspecific parotitis, this term is generally used for patients in whom no definite cause is found. Episodes may last for several days, paralleling the time course of a bacterial or viral illness. Recurrent parotitis of childhood, an uncommon syndrome in which recurring episodes clinically resembling mumps. Generally, episodes begin by age 5 years, and virtually all patients become asymptomatic by age 10-15 years. Sialadenosis, sialosis in this disorder, both parotid glands may be diffusely enlarged with only modest symptoms. The glands are soft and non-tender. Approximately half of the patients have endocrine disorders such as diabetes, nutritional disorders such as Pellagra or Quashiorka, or have taken drugs such as Dvantidine, Theoridazine, or Isoprinaline. Sarcoduses, the lungs, skin, and lymph nodes are most often affected, but the salivary glands are involved in approximately 10% of cases. Bilateral firm, smooth and non-tender parotid enlargement is classic. Xerostomy occasionally occurs. IgG4 related sialadenitis. IgG4 related sialadenitis is particularly associated with involvement of one or both of the lacrimal glands, referred to as IgG4 related decreosialadenitis. Pneumoparotitis, air within the ducts of the parotid gland with or without inflammation. The duct orifice normally functions as a valve to prevent air from entering the gland from a pressurized oral cavity. Rarely, an incompetent valve allows insufflation of air into the duct system. Pneumoparotitis most commonly occurs in wind instrument players, glass blowers, and scuba divers. Associated with bulimia, parotid gland swelling is a common feature of self-induced vomiting. This swelling usually develops 3-4 days after the stopping of chronic excessive self-induced vomiting. The swelling is bilateral, with little tenderness. Causes are not well understood. Marsetric hypertrophy. Marsetric hypertrophy, enlargement of the masseter muscles volume, can present as facial swelling in the parotid gland area and may be confused with, true, parotid gland swelling. The specific cause of marsetric hypertrophy is still unclear, but it may be related to tooth grinding or malocclusion. Symptoms Redness, erythema, over the side of the face or the upper neck. Swelling in pre- and post-auricular areas extending to angle of mandible. 
breathing or swallowing difficulty, these may be emergency symptoms. Extreme mouth or facial pain especially when eating. Thick purulent discharge, pus, on milking. Dry mouth, fever with chills. Abnormal tastes, foul tastes. Decreased ability to open the mouth. Swelling of the face, particularly in front of the ears, below the jaw, or on the floor of the mouth. Diagnostic evaluation. History taking. Physical examination. Complete blood count, leukocytosis. Cultures may be obtained from parotid needle aspiration. Ultrasound demonstrates solid masses or fluid collections within the gland, and detects hypoechoic areas. CT scanning and MRI with gadolinium enhancement may be used to determine the size, shape, and presence of a neoplasm or abscess within the gland. Management Non-pharmacological management Warm salt water rinses, a half teaspoon of salt in one cup of water, may be soothing and keep the mouth moist. Massaging the gland with heat may help. Hydration drink lot of water and use sugar-free lemon drops to increase the flow of saliva and reduce swelling. Adequate hydration. Pharmacological management. Antimicrobial therapy. Flutloxacillin 500 mg POQDS. Metronidazole 400 mg POTDS, if anaerobic infection suspected poor dentition. Doxycycline 200 mg POOD. Tycoplanin 4 every 12 hours for 4 doses. Clindamycin 1.2 G4 QDS. Gentamicin 5 mg per kg for stat dose, NB, use 3 mg per kg if, 65 years old. Analgesics. Acetaminophen, ibuprofen, may be used for headaches or discomfort due to parotitis. Anti-inflammatory drugs. NSAIDs, ibuprofen, diclofenac sodium, nemosulide, and steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, prednisolone, dexamethasin, bethamethasin. Badalona patch plaster. Surgical management. Surgical drainage and decompression of the gland are occasionally required if spontaneous drainage does not occur. If there is an abscess, surgery to drain it or aspiration may be done. Parotidectomy may eventually be required for people with long-standing infection. Treat the cause sialography, imaging, stones or strictures, any abnormalities. Possible complications. Meningitis, aseptic meningitis occurs in 10% of patients with mumps. Encephalitis, encephalitis occurs rarely, 0.020.3% of cases, as a complication of mumps. Orchitis, inflammation of one or both testicles occur in 20% of postpubertal males who develops mumps. Euphoritis, females who have reached puberty may have inflammation in the ovaries, euphoritis, or breasts, mastitis. Hearing loss, cranial nerve involvement, especially eighth cranial nerve damage, is one of the leading causes of deafness in childhood, affecting approximately 5100000 mumps patients. Pancreatitis is reported as a complication in approximately 4% of cases. Occurrence of mumps during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy is associated with 25% incidence of spontaneous abortions. Death following mumps is rare and is mostly due to encephalitis. Prevention Good oral hygiene may prevent some cases of bacterial infection. Drink plenty of water, keep mouth wet. So guys, thanks for watching my video. You can like and comment on my video, but don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel to watch quality content like this. Thank you guys.